And who else do we have? Patrick McKee. We have Patrick. You want to show his book, Rich? I, I read this book last weekend. What a title. I, I blind I, in one ear. And he'll tell you why. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. But what a what an upbringing this, yeah. this man had. Colorful, I, I'm, colorful life. Colorful. To, and I wonder if it could happen anywhere really but England. This kind of an upbringing. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, He's it's got so an interesting English. story to tell. Yeah. It certainly does. All right, here's the book we were talking about um, uh, earlier, a most interesting autobiography. It sure is. Blind in One Ear, written by the star of the Avengers series that we all remember so well. Here he is, Mr. Patrick McNee. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Nice How you doing? Nice to see you. Patrick Hello. McNee. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Yes, Very nice sir. to meet you. Among other things, you made this hat famous, pal. It this sure was did. it. They Nobody to... wore it like you. They did it with a flat iron, you know, at the side. It's oh, strange. There's a difference. They, they do it literally like that, and they make it look rather dashing. And they put a hard bit in the top, and if you fall off a horse, <laughs> you don't break That's your right. head. That's right. That was the original it's... purpose of a hat like this. Oh, yes. Oh, I, I didn't know. Know. So it was just to look the part, look dashing. No, I don't think so. It's called a bowler hat. I don't know why it's called a bowler <laughs> hat at all. So we were talking about the book and what an interesting life you have led. I'm sure we all have, though. Yeah. Oh, nothing uh, like yours. Nothing like yours. It's fascinating that you survived and turned out to be such a nice person. Well, uh, can I just show you something? You're, you're going to have a small child. And I had a grandson, oh. and he's now down at La Jolla in California. And we were on the beach last Saturday. His name's... Oh, oh is it, that's the beach of La Jolla. That's yeah. what I see the little uh, Torrey Pines Mesa. That's right, right. Yeah. yeah. So they only grow there, as you know. <laughs> he's, only, he's 14 months. He started walking about uh, three weeks ago, which you know is late. I mean, uh, yes. I, I don't know why I'm advising you on all this. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's convinced because it's a gift or it'll walk at six months, you know. <laughs> probably I hope will. Not. <laughs> yeah, but it probably will, you see. There are no rules to that no. at all. Mine talks to this grandson all the time, but mm. was complete and delightful gibberish. That's... Well, you know we have a picture of you as an infant with your mother. Why don't we take a look at that she right now since we're woman. talking about She uh, died, you know, two years ago uh, at the age of 95, and she was a pretty... Con she comes from the alcohol generation, and it shows that good brandy can take you through to the age of 95. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she... But both of your parents were heavy, heavy drinkers. Yes, my uh, father was a smaller man, though, and I think it got to his tummy quicker. Mm -hmm. And the old boy passed away a lot earlier than my mother did. Mm -hmm. What a volatile relationship they had, too, and you were caught right in the midst of it. Well, I liked it, you know, because you get that much extra attention. My mother lived with a very strong lady who was the heir to Dewar's whiskey and consumed uh, most, most of, of her profit. inheritance. Yeah. <laughs> and then she would visit. It was only about three miles away. My father was the smallest racehorse trainer in uh, Lambourne, which was the place to train. And then she went on after about half an hour and visited my brother's father, who was the tallest racehorse trainer in Lambourne. And then she went back to her um, female lover. And I think that way, nobody feels left out. And she used to take me with her. <laughs> but, but it well, was now confusing this, for you. This was child. Uncle Evelyn, right? This is yes. Uh, she didn't like... Uh, she was a very fine woman. Spotswood, her name was, and uh, she wouldn't have a man in the house at all. And so, as I came along with her uh, very great friend, my mother, I had to wear a skirt. Uh, I wore a kilt. Sure. I mean, I like to think that I've grown up, and none of this has affected me at all. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you feel as a little boy with this relationship, or did you understand what was happening? No, but I felt awful good, and if you go into a bedroom and people least expect it, you see the most remarkable thing. <laughs> What an education. Mm. It was. It educated me early. I was what you call a precocious boy. And, you know, I went to a very good school. People like that who enjoy themselves, they have to deal with children. The best way of dealing with children, we always did it in Great Britain, was to send the child away at the age of five, as far away as you could get. It was yeah. about 200 miles. Keep it there till it was 17, and then send it into the Navy or the armed services <laughs> to fight and lead the men over the top. Yes. And I was, I was trained for that. I was totally untrained in how to relate to the opposite sex. I'd... And that created a lot of trauma for you also. It did, yeah, because yeah. I'd never seen a woman naked at all until I did. Suddenly, at the age of 19, I thought, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I married her. And God bless her. <laughs> Poor darling, it nearly ruined her life. <laughs> How many times have you been married, Patrick? Well, I'm uh, now very, very happily married. The Good. two of us got married a couple of years ago. I married to Baba, a Hungarian, uh -huh. a very vital lady. And we were married by a Reverend Shirley Fletcher, who gave us the best methods of birth control in a beautifully illustrated brochure at the end of our wedding, which we felt was optimistic. In fact, my wife said she must really believe in miracles. We're both 67 <laughs> years old, you oh, think. It, it She's could happen. Who knows? You, a miracle. you never know. I'd rather not. Your, your life has been miraculous <laughs> as it is. Oh, here you are in your bowler, and of course with uh, this rig, Diana Rigg, and uh, 
Do you ever see her anymore, Patrick? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. You know, people think that she was on the show with you so much longer than she was. Was it two seasons she was on? Oh, it's terrible. The irony of that was she sort of portrayed a wo uh, the woman's lib early on. Early Before 60s. anybody, yeah. And yet she had a lot of male chauvinist producers who were perfectly beastly to her. Mm -hmm. And so she just left. But she had a baby at 42, you know. And it's a darling now. That little girl is 13. Mm -hmm. And Di is now a commander of the British Empire. The Queen made her a commander. Uh -huh. that her husband and daughter run up and down the stairs saluting her. Hi, commander. <laughs> yeah, she's a great lady. One of the top three great actors. Mm. You have two of them here at the moment. There's a movie here. Uh, oh, in the, oh, it's interesting to say, in the early years, I think there really is. A good part for a small boy in a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Your stories with Sir Lawrence Olivier and the other fine actors yeah. are so much. They're yeah. wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much. Highly recommend nice this book called Blind in One Ear? Yes. And indeed. the reason for the title? Well, it's obviously deaf in one ear, but I never like to say, and the whole of my life has been like that. I wish I'd say it and become the Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick McNee, everybody. The Sun Dress of Life, provided by the New York Marriott Marquis on Broadway, featuring New York's only revolving rooftop restaurant for you, and JW, New York's newest entertainment room. For tickets to lie with Regis and Kathy Lee, please write to Guest Relations, 36A West 66th Street, New York, New York, 10023.